You are live on Talk Sport. Good morning to you. Hello. Hello, sir. Granny Buttons, it's always right. You and Wheel are a pile of shite. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, expand on that if you can. Well. Well. It's been with her to Tommy. What? What? Could you expand on your point, uh, elucidate? Yes. You're um, a pile of shite, and yes. you should not be. Uh, uh, can, can, you, can, can you do it better than this? I'm, I, I wish I could. Well, I wish I could. Can, can, can how, you how, how, how would that be? What, in what way would it be better? What would you recommend? Um, Tommy. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, pile of shite, mate. That's yeah. really basically what you are. You know what I mean? You, you came back to Cheltenham, lost all your dosh, you tell everybody in the radio that you know about horses and all that, but you really don't know nothing, do you, about horses? Yes, I do. Well, what... what do you mean came back from Cheltenham? What do you know about horses? I've ridden round Cheltenham. I've beaten Johnny Frankham, the greatest jockey round Cheltenham. What have you ever done in racing? What do you know about racing? I work ride my own horses, pal. Some of my training techniques are ahead of Godolphin's. What do you mean I don't know about horses? What do you know about horses? Well, we, who's going to win the Lincoln tomorrow? Um, I do, well, I don't know that, Tommy. If I mean, high stalls or low? Shut up! If I'll I tell you, that. a high stall horse will win it, but they will come across to the stand side. You, you, you you're caught off in the back. Co, co, um, of Cheltenham, coming a couple of years ago on a train. You don't know nothing, Tommy. You don't know nothing about horses. You don't know nothing about nothing. Have you been out I, tonight? Yeah, I have. Okay, yeah. It shows. It shows. Let's go to line six, shall we? Good morning. Hi. You're live on Talk Sport. Hello. Oh, God, I thought you said it's something about a sex show. I got through to, to some horrible line. Did you want... Oh, you, no, you I want to speak to Tommy sex? Boyd. You're speaking to Tommy Boyd. but and, and he's very... In yes, you are. Well, I can well. hear you talking to someone else. Oh, God. Turn your radio off, dear. Oh, you. Oh, sorry. I'm speaking Don't to somebody else. Don't be so else. annoyed. Hello? Hello. 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 So you phoned the wrong number and you got through... No, to I didn't. We just said you got through to a sex line. That wasn't me. No, I thought that person who answered said something sex line. But it was me that answered and I didn't... Well, it sounded about... like that. And you well, never know. No, it didn't. I'm living in my sister's house. Well, She's that... got all internet things That's and your sex fault. machines. I don't live like that. Sex machines? No, fax machines. Oh, how boring. And things like that because she has her own property business. And so I'm someone who lives in Brighton and I got sick, went into a hospital on Boxing Day and I've been living with her ever since. Well, that brings I'm moving up. back to Brighton on Tuesday to be where I want to be. Well, all you've got to do now is tell us about your future and we've got, we've got the whole of your life there, a little thumbnail what, sketch. What, 37 I am now, well, 37. so I've had a fair bit. Mm -hmm. you've, you've had a fair bit. Of life? Of life. I had a lot. Uh, I agree with you. I'm about uh, 520, I should think. 520? Well, I should imagine by now. What, on the on the scale of what? Uh, being alive and what you're packing. 520? Well, I should think about that. What does that make me think? I don't know. About uh, the same, I should think. 520? Yeah, mm. feels like it, doesn't it? What, 520? All right, then... Uh, no, I'm up in the prime numbers. I mate, don't then. know. What? Well, I've learnt about prime numbers. You have? Yeah, because I'm living with my sister and her eight-year-old son. And they talk of at nothing fancy else. school because they live in Chiswick and they're rich and I'm poor. Yeah. And I sold the big issue. And on Christmas Day, I nearly died. They realized I didn't want to stay alive anymore because I was too tired. They saved me because they're all rich. They put me into a mental hospital in uh, Lisson Grove yeah. for a month. I stayed there and my consultant knows I'm fine. He's always known I was fine. Just tired of trying to stay alive for so long. I know, darling. But no, I'm fine. I'm fine yes, now. Yes, yes, and I know. today we yeah. went to Brighton, where I do have been for three years, and I lost my son. I didn't lose him. He didn't die, but everyone, everyone thought he had. I went to Brighton three years ago. After one year, I moved in with a guy, with me and my son, and then we split up, and my son went to live with his dad in North London, and I'm in Brighton, and, and then I just had a breakdown because I was too upset, but I was still trying to be a nurse for so long, but I didn't want to feel that misery around me. 
No. And I just couldn't keep going like that. And then I was a gardener, and then I was going to paint 22 uh, outside windows up the scaffolding. I did anything and everything rather than sign on. And I did sell the big issue, even though I come from a rich family. And I, that was the worst thing. To sit in that street when I think what they would have thought was that meant I couldn't actually talk to my family. They're too rich and uh, they look down on people. Can and I, I ask never you a question? Did. Pardon? Can I ask you a question? What? Do you say you're 37? Yeah. And you, you obviously have a really, if I may say so, you have a really... A very tiring life. Yeah. If I may say so, you have, you clearly have an, a tremendous talent for remembering things. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. It's a very difficult question. No, I don't mind. And I don't know if I could answer it myself, but I'm, I want to ask oh, you this. I'll try. All right. Can you remember, and I'm, I think everybody... As long as I can hear you. I know. I'm in Chiswick at my sister's house. I know, I know. Up on the third floor, and there's turn and green uh, tube running past. Well, this is it the question. It suddenly came past, and I couldn't hear you. This is the question. Can you remember the last time, how long ago it was, when for a period of time, perhaps some days, or maybe even weeks, or better still, some months, that you felt as though somehow everything was all right? I feel like that loads of the time. I try to. What? You're trying to tell me when did I feel everything was all right? I'm just asking the question. I know. I know you are, but no, never. Not no. for ages. Never okay. really. No. Will you look after yourself, please? Yeah, no, I'm fine. Mr. I know, I know, I know. I know. You'd say it. Moving in with someone called Phil. I'm going to be a great healer in Brighton. All right. Well, I wouldn't have you... done it for nothing, would I? Stay no. alive. Now listen to me. Why? What, what did I say? No one ever. Everyone tells me my consultant who I saw two days ago, yeah. Dr. Ahmed, he said, "Now listen to me." Yes. He said, "I've listened to you for half an hour." Yes. Why I do you think? Like why, why, do you, I'm why, do you, why, why do you? Why do you? Why do you think? Oh, you're, you're not why... paying me anything, so you should listen to me. I was thinking, why should? Say yes. that to me. Well, You're not why, listening to me, I've listened why do you, to you. Think, why do you think he did say it? Sod. Why do you think the cheeky sod said it to you? Uh, because he needed to, uh, uh, he needed me to hear something important he was saying. Yes, yeah, so listen to me. I'm not listen to him. No, you're not listening to me. Well, I'm sorry, I feel very much for this caller, um, but there's nothing I can do because, um, you know, it... <laughs> I feel like going out of the studio, uh, putting a record on, or leaving Paul to talk to you, and um, and talking to this caller for the next five hours. But where would you get? Dear lady, isn't life hard? God! God, life is difficult. Gee whiz. No, Jesus, life is difficult. God, I don't get it myself. And yet, they, I'm told this is my eighth visit back here on Earth, Paul, by um, some people who well, know well, about the Why are they counting? Um, well, it's, it's to do with uh, the number of times in which your soul has been uh, reborn within another um, Does it matter body. how many times? How many times? Yes. Roughly seven or eight times is all it takes for well, you to become a wise soul and for you to go to Nirvana and never return. Uh, so, are you, have you reached Nirvana yet? No, this is according to some a particular uh, person or group of people. And um, yes, I should be very flattered. Um, however, apparently I'm extremely stupid and I like it here. I didn't know that. <laughs> News to me. <laughs> Poor lady. Poor lady. Yeah. But there's a lot of us feel like that. I feel like that sometimes. I, I, when you said that, I, you know, I thought, well, actually, I can't remember a, a suspend, uh, an extended period of time. Uh, that I've, no, 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 no. 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 Uh, do you know what I spend all my life thinking? If I get through this bit, it'll be all right. Yeah. If I, if I, if I do this, then everything will be okay. And I've been thinking like that for about 40 years now. <laughs> First right. track, you say? First track. <laughs> Thank you. 
But you say it works. On a kids' TV program called Number 73? No. You didn't? No. And what kids' TV program do you used to do then? Uh, Magpie, What's Happening, Jigsaw, Puzzle Trail, The Saturday Show, The Saturday Starship, The Wide Awake Club, Wide Awake Children's Club. ITV. Ah, uh, Tommy. It's quite a bit. Mar one wonderful form of employment. That one. But, no, that huh? wasn't it. No. Oh, Lady of the Tattooed Lady. No, but they all sound the same anyway. What is that song about, though? We're not as... We're, thank your lucky stars that we're not as half as smart as we like to that's think That's it. That's it. But what was it that they did that wasn't that smart? Uh, fall in love. That's not very smart. It's not very smart. It isn't. No. You know, do you remember, uh, like, when you fell in love? Oh, uh, yeah. Isn't it hurt? Yeah. Jeez. It's agony. You see, it's, it's like our caller the other day who said, it, oh, it, it, it's tricky to, to approach women and everything. I know exactly what he means, you know. But he's, he's, he respects women, so he feels... Uh, am I intruding yeah. on their happiness? Ha yeah. If yeah. I was to come up to them and, and to suggest myself to them, mm. Mm. and I, you know, and I've totally lost the track of what I was going to say. Doesn't matter. No, doesn't matter. I'm, I, I, I've had a number of faxes. Well, three to be honest. From last week, I won't mention names, but from people asking for advice on how to uh, talk to women. Okay. Which is. Thanks to my experience, something that I am in a position to advise on. So I would be quite happy to do that if people could be a bit more specific. If you have a particular area of your social interaction with women that um, you would just like to buff up a little bit, then by all means email me and I'll um, do my best to provide you with advice on air tonight. I will naturally... Um, respect your privacy and anonymity if you would uh, like me to do so. Please indicate in your email tommy at talksport.co.uk phone number 08700 40 50 60 okay, Good morning line 5, you're live on Talksport Hello oh, Hello, is that, is that uh, Tommy Boyd? Tommy Boyd speaking Oh yeah, uh, I was just wondering about the uh uh, the guy about the poem where you wouldn't let him talk. Hmm. No, uh, I wouldn't let him read a poem. Uh, yeah. yeah. You're a prat. A Why big is that? prat. Why is that then? Why is that then? Hmm, big prat. <laughs> So it's funny, it's half past two, we normally get, it normally goes a bit funny about sort of half past four, but um, obviously we're into some sort of accelerated personality defect here amongst callers, which is cool. Uh, line one, usually good for a laugh, but let's hope it's somebody who's, um, who's on top. Good morning, you're on Talk Sport. Yeah. <coughs> Hello? Hello? Yeah, man, it's DJ Semiotic here, man. Yeah. How you doing? Very well, thank you. Yeah, I'm just calling from uh, California, USA, and uh, this is a rocking radio show. This is indeed, yes. It rocks, Tommy. Respect anyway. Far out. Take care, man. Love, peace, and orange juice. Line two, you're live on Talk Sport. Who's this? Hello. Hello there. Um, Tommy. Hi. What is going on at your station? Now what? Well, I think to myself, Talk Sport used to be Talk Radio. It's, uh, it's as if everybody's just ringing up and slagging you off, slagging that mic decking off and giving everybody a hard time. Mm. And it seems that you lot are responding to it and giving them back. Now, we want to be entertained. We don't want... Because while you keep doing this, you're distracting all the idiots. Who's we? Well, yourself. No, you said we. Meaning your presenters. No, 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 I don't think you did. You said we want to be entertained. Who's we? Us, the, the listeners, I'm the, who listen, tune into your station. And how many, of them you, how many of those have mm. you been talking to? It doesn't matter how many well, of them. Well, how many have you been speaking to? You just attract Well, I speak to, I, 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 I speak yeah, to one, them I speak to them endlessly on a, on a Friday night. One conversation tonight was the lad who, who wanted to sponsor a child. That's about the decent call you've had all night. I've listened to you the other night. And he's coming to the conclusion that the station is dying on its feet because you're just attracting idiots. People are going to be turning that dial and tuning in with well, other people. Well, I'm sorry, but you see, the simple fact of the matter is, and I'm surprised because you do sound intelligent enough to grasp this fact, but you couldn't be more wrong. 
Well, what, when I'm we... just telling you a fact. You couldn't be more wrong, OK? Now, that's coming from a professional, if I may say so, to an amateur, if I may say so. Right. Now, you've got to just put that in your pipe and smoke it. Sorry. What happened to all the subjects that we used to get? And people used well, to join in and boring, join, go boring, on the bandwagon. Trash. Trash news stories. Well, boring. You reckon it is? No, I know it is. And what's more, it does you harm to think that's what's important. What's important is you and what's going on in you. And these are the things that we're talking about and sorting out in the wee small hours. This, is, this in... is why it's changing names all the time. It's going downhill. I don't know what you said that for. It's got nothing to do with anything. Oh, it's because you're attracting idiots. It's got nothing to do with what you think. The... <sighs> How can you call it? Talk, I'm sport, sorry, what did you say? Radio, what did you say? It's attracting idiots. It's so easy for me to pick the phone up and slag you off and say, oh, you was a Leah uh, presenter. But presenting children's shows, you, you couldn't ask for nothing better because children like learning, listening and seeing. That's the best way to start. That's where a lot of them start and then they grow big and start going on their own shows. Well, keep listening. We may have more conversations as engaging as this as the evening develops. Maybe you'll set a trend. Right, but yes. you never know. You never know, do you? You never know. You never know. We might just have more sparkling, dovetailing conversations like that with folk listening to, caring about, and responding to what the other person clearly has to say and demonstrating that, that sort of cohesion, that conversational cohesion, which is essential in this social engagement, just like we had just then. Hello? Oh, we might have an idiot. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean you, Live 3. Who's Hi, this? Hi, Tommy. Speaking. Yeah, but it cost me money when I press five. Well, don't press five then. No, but I mean, I, it's already costing me money to get through to the station. Why should I have to pay twice? Well, Rather don't than... call then. Now, that's not a very nice attitude, is it? Well, I'm only giving you penny-saving advice here. No, you're not. You're being nasty. I'm you're not be... being nasty. I'm you're... saying don't call. You're being aggressive. I'm not being aggressive. I'm just telling you what you want to hear. Save no, money. No, you're not. You're not answering my question. I've answered which your... I asked you politely. Yes. I've answered your question, sir. Your question has been thoroughly and utterly answered, and you have asked me why you should be spending money, well, and my answer to you is, if that is of concern to you, or if it is um, a difficulty for you, then you would be better advised simply to enjoy the show from the radio. Well, no, no, see... You're of no help at all. Would you like to give me your name? Yes, I'm Tommy Boyd. No, you're not Tommy Boyd. All right, then. Um, Are you Paul? No, I'm not Paul. I'm Tommy Boyd. No, you're not Tommy Boyd. How do you know that? Because I know Tommy Boyd's voice. This is ludicrous. This is absolutely ludicrous. And um, I know James Whale, and I spoke to James Whale and Tommy Boyd at the same table. At the same table? At the same table. I've never, ever sat down at the table with James Whale. No, because you're not Tommy Boyd. When, when was this? When did you meet Tommy Boyd with James Whale? Uh, let me see. Uh, it would be uh, 1988. 1988? 1988? Where? Um, it was at King's Cross. 1988? Where? At King's Cross? What, the railway station? No, it wasn't the railway station. It was a tea room. A tea room? Yeah. The you meant... Wrap it up. I think we should. Yep. Uh, lovely talking to you. Thank you. Look after yourself. Thank you. <laughs> ah, dear. We're all members of the same species. It's fantastic. They just all like him. Remember, on the same like species, we're, we're identical. We are? We're identical. We're all the same, we are. So the other thing, when you train dolphins, initially, they all look identical. And it takes about four or five days, and then suddenly you can't, for the life of you, work out why you couldn't see how different they were, they are, from day one. Cows are the same. Cows are the same! I come, I come from a far farming village. Cows are exactly the same. In that they're not the same. They're not the same. No, 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 no. There's cows and cows. Intervene here professionally for a second. Yeah. Right, you did ask my professional opinion. Yes, please. Well, I'm afraid that it's not a controlled conversation because you're, you're actually just letting a lot out. Yeah. So we need to actually now start to give it some shape. So there is, first of all, an, an important observation I have to make, which will take the form of a question. Um, we, are lo we often have... 
a train of unconnected thinking which runs through our mind when, whether we are awake or asleep. It consists of images and, and imagined sounds. <clears throat> sometimes it's logical, sometimes it's not. But I'm getting these thoughts. Shut up. And, and one's not come. Shut one's up. One's not gone wrong. Shut up. Now, if you were to weigh the number of those thoughts which do not materialize against the odd one that appears to have been a successful prediction, yeah. you'd probably find that you have something like, and I'm just guessing, but it'll give you an idea of the scale of the thing, 99,999 thoughts, which should something happen to vaguely give flesh to those thoughts in the future, you'd be entitled to say to yourself, but blimey, I saw that happening. However, you don't. And you also eliminate them from your calculation because there's no significant event to illuminate them. However, when the one in a hundred thousand thoughts appears adjacent to something which happens later, it's understandable human nature to tie the two things together. So, quite frankly, mathematically, I would say to you, just as the philosophers say, it will be a greater coincidence if no coincidences ever happened, right? Yep. Something like four out of half a million random thoughts appearing to be precognitive or premonitory, right, yep. is probably mathematically about right. Now, what you need to do if you are interested in verification is to keep a very, very careful diary recording not just the thoughts that you have which appear to come true, but try to track down during the course of a typical five minutes, a typical five minutes, yep. all the thoughts that you have, period, and see what kind of a range they furnish. Okay? Yeah. And that will um, and that will be very interesting. You'll be the first person to do it since Proust. Even imagine it. That's what I'm saying. I don't even want uh, it in my head. <laughs> I was passing. I was passing. Do you know Birmingham at all? Yeah, pretty reasonably. Well, it was late on a Friday night. I don't know what I was doing out at about eleven o'clock, and I went past a car in a car park. I was slightly above it, and there in the in the in the front seat of the car were a couple doing what couples do. Yeah. But they weren't wearing anything. And oh. it was as harmless and probably as romantic and loving a scene as I've ever seen. But the fact of the matter is, I saw a bloke making love and it haunts me to this day. <laughs> I didn't want to... It was his bottom going up and down. I don't, I, and, and still, I go, Rugh! when I think of it. So, well, it's like blue movies. I mean, you've seen one, you've seen them all, haven't you? He's a nice, he's a very, very nice man. Three lady tennis players dressed for tennis. None of them are on a cornicova, it's too obvious. <laughs> One of them is worryingly that Moresmo. Do you know the guy I mean? Uh, I'm not, not too up on my tennis. He plays ladies afraid. tennis. Okay. <laughs> and gets away with it. That's a worry. He's got blacked out window. That's a big worry. Yes, it's the Hohenzollern music test, which is a psychological device similar to... Um, the inkblot test, similar to the uh, Juan El Guapo Hernandez word association test. It's um, a piece of music and you are able to identify things about yourself that may have been remote by analysing the images which crowd the mind when you hear the piece of music. We play it at the uh, beginning of each hour of the programme. We'll go straight to good old line one. Good morning, you're live on TalkSport. Hello. Ah, very lucky. Hi. Hello. Is that Mr. Tommy? Sir. Tommy Boyd, I think your name is. At your service. Yes. Good evening. Sir. Um, I'm on air. You are. Wow. Oh, how terrific. Fabulous. 
Um, I spoke to you uh, last week or the week before, I can't remember now, um, trying to tell you how poor your show is, but as usual, you, you just criticise the people who criticise you. you. You are there for criticism, Tommy, whether you like it or not. I love it. You love it, don't you? You love it, pal. Right, but as usual, we get shouted down. We don't get the opportunity. Well, to that's because the criticism's not very good. No, generally it is. It's just that you don't... You don't Give me some people. decent criticism. Right, okay. Your show is poor. That's poor we criticism. Are wanting someone better than yourself. This isn't good enough. Radio. It's not fierce enough. Come on. Well, we're actually wanting someone better than yourself this on the radio. This is feeble, song. pal. Feeble. Come on. Stand up. You're sitting down. You sound tired and depleted. Yeah. Come on. Get it. Get. It. Come on. Do it. Take a deep breath. Come on. Wake up. Very good, Tommy, very good. You were on about your maths so great. Congratulations. I didn't realise you had so many qualifications. Didn't understand that. Can you speak a bit more slowly now? Shall I sit down, stand up, talk slowly, or shall I speed up? Which one do you want? You really are a very poor communicator, sir. I've been told I'm a very good communicator, actually. Well, uh, your maybe mom, you are. Maybe your, your mother loves. Maybe your mother loves you. Maybe your mother loves you. But um, yes, Cambridge Board. What have you got? God, I'm no way to divulge my qualifications to you, Tommy. Who cares? Well, exactly. What difference cares? does it make? What difference does it I make? I just want you to move over to let someone who could do the program better justice than yourself. There's nobody so, in no. the world of broadcasting who's anywhere near as good as me. Name one person. God, I could name about. I could name five on your the same radio show. Do it then. Well, Mike Dickens for start. Well, no, he's not in my league. You know that. I know. Good God, you couldn't let you. <laughs> Anybody else? One. Go on, go on, go on. Tom on the football programme at four o'clock. Off at East Ender. He's a good actor. He's brilliant. He's brilliant on the radio. You know nothing. Tell me, do you, do you know anything at all about football, Tom? Do I know anything about football? Okay. What would you like to know? Would you like to know about the rules? Because I'm a qualified... No. Uh, listen to me, I'm a qualified football association referee. Would you like Tommy, to know anything about the rules? Thing. What? You're, you're, a, you're a qualified dolphin swimmer. No, you know, there are no, there are no qualified... Name an English Premiership manager who's won the league. Name five, Euro name five European cities who have uh, uh, two teams. Oh, come on, you're not very good. Will you, next time you ring to have a go, will you be no, a bit better than this? Name two no. European sides, Tommy. You haven't a clue, have you? Name two European sides who have... Uh, Name a European city that has two sides in at least, now at least the European Cup semi-final. I mean, I bet you have no chance. In fact, if you can't name two out of five, you are poor. poor. You're on about your London side. You're on about some oh, London side. Oh, that's what it is. That's uh, what it I is. Caught, you yeah, you, you, you drag me in, Tommy. You, you drag me in. Yes, you want to be listening like... to your show, yes. Yeah. It'll be your usual argument. Come yes, on, you I must be London. so sad to Come listen on, you to your London. program. I must be so sad to listen to you. Come yeah, on, then. Love it. Two questions. Answer but, at least one of them. Uh, well, the first, question, the first question didn't work. And you're a premiership manager. It, that's not a, a winner. question. I'll win. No, look. Will you just sit back, ask the question properly, and when it's complete and proper, I'll answer it. Okay. I know what you're right. I know you're listening. Are you sitting back? I know what you're... about to give you the question, all yeah. right? Name getting, an he's, English... He's getting very boring, this bloke, isn't he? So, come on. He's get, the thing is, he's getting very boring. Um, what should we do with him? He's got on to his second question now. I know, but what do you see, do he's, with not, him? he's not even interested in the answer. I, I love it when people have a go at me, but it, malice, I often say this, malice, <laughs> malice is like tennis. You shouldn't play it with somebody who is manifestly inferior to yourself. Um, yeah, nice try, pal. Do you want to try again in a few weeks? Practice on somebody you don't like, okay? Cut off again. No, not yet. Cut. Now. <laughs> I'm going to clip that. Cut off again. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Hey, it's the singing telephonist. We've not heard him for ages. No, well, or her, you don't know. No, let's be quiet, because I want this as well. Can't he get a bit of a flourish in there or well, something? Well, I have a view on this. I do believe that if our telephone numbers were music, pieces of music, it, they would be easier to remember. 
and your telephone number, you could choose a piece of music. I would choose Jerusalem. And then if anybody wanted to ring me, you see, they wouldn't have to go, oh, what's Tom's number? They'd just go, bum, 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 and they got me. Ah, you I think you're onto something there. I've been onto something for years. Line three, good morning, you're live on Talk Sport. Quite drunk. Hmm? Yep, not bad, not bad. That's the, the beauty of hot calls. You get a little... You get a little sort of snippet of the life of... Jerusalem. No, no, no. Jerusalem. No, no, no. That's not the tune, is it? Yes. Do you... No, it it's done by William Blake, mate. It's done by How's William Blake, mate. What are you How's on about? How's it going, Thomas, mate? And hey, did those feet mate. in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green? It was because the, the Victorians were so all-powerful, they were able to rewrite history and say that Jesus once had a... Had a, I, a fortnight I mean, in know. England. Well, the people in the hospital, if he actually came back, the police had actually not followed him kind of thing. He came back and he attacked one of the nurses. He stabbed her a few times in the arm. And luckily, one of her workmates actually was able to um, get the knife off him and he saved her from being killed. Yet the two police officers actually, you know, they just did a runner almost. Uh, what do you reckon to that? I'm not going to even retain the memory of that story, frankly. Why is that? Why should I? No, I'm just curious what you thought about it. I'm not I told you what I thought, I've told you what I thought about it. I don't want it. It's not, Why? A, piece of, it's not a piece of information I want. I mean, it was just, it was just like, like a, a sudden diamond to some of the police these days. Oh, right, it's an issue. Sorry, I didn't realise. Yeah. Uh, the issue is the um, police today aren't what they used to be. Well, not necessarily, no, it was just these two ah. police officers. What yeah. it was, um, they were called to a hospital, as I said. Um, why Why be interested in something that um, doesn't involve you? It's got nothing to do with no, it. No, what it was, I, I was, you know, um, I was reading the paper yesterday and I read this and I was pretty... Um, but whenever, pretty you read, whenever, whenever you read a newspaper, you, 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 you end up feeling slightly disturbed about the world. Not necessarily, but over this story, yeah. No, you do. Um, not necessarily. Necessarily. The bulk of what is printed in newspapers and reported as news unsettles you. Not everything. The bulk, I said. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So why bother? Why did you want to tell people that distressing story and give people images of, of mad men with knives stabbing nurses? Why, why do that? Um, well, that's what I read in the paper yesterday. But why pass it on? Well, the interesting point was there were lots of crazy. No, focus on the question. Focus on the question I'm asking. Yeah, it was analyzed. the two police officers, the fact that they... No, I'm asking you, yeah. not about the police officers, not about journalism, I'm asking you why you, you, yeah. you felt you'd better tell that story. And what effect it may have on a, on a person just lying in bed wanting to find some tranquility. Um, well, I said, yeah, you got a point, but I was mainly interested hey, in your opinion. I got a point, and I gave you my opinion. It's a piece of information I'm going to do my utmost to eliminate from my mind. But I won't be able to, and like a lot of news stories, which haunt me to this day, I'll probably carry it around for a few days until it fades. So thanks for that. Mind you, it's not your fault. Every journalist... You're live on TalkSport. Hello. Hi, Tommy. Hey. Hey, uh, you, you worked on LBC, didn't you? Until they fired me, yes. Uh, just, uh, did, did you give Anne Diamond one? I didn't, no. I'd love to have done, but thank you for your call. Line five, you're live. I have only made love to a handful of the women I... Ah! <laughs> Make a tune out of it, for God's sake. Line six, you're live on Talk Sport. A handful of the women I've worked with. You should never, ever do that. I went out with a girl on the cosmetic counter of a department store I worked in, and when it fell through... It was a nightmare because um, I had to sort of still catch her eye on things at work. So generally speaking, don't go out with people you work with. Line six. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I know people are taping themselves. A lot of people Aye. tape themselves when they're on, right? Aye. And uh, if they're rude, what I do is often when they're gone, I, I say something really rude all right, to them just so that although they put the phone down and uh -huh. chicken down, all right, yeah. They have to. They have to listen to me slacking them off on their <laughs> on their tape record. Don't do it to me. No, of course I won't. S E eight W Q. Right. All right. Okay. Thanks for your hey, call. Listen, you're great, by the way. Oh, uh, you're so you. Uh, um, listen, uh, you're going to keep up this floor. What I used to do, Paul, I don't do it anymore because I nearly got caught with it. This is a broadcasting trick that nobody else has ever used. You know when you're in delay. Yeah. Okay. If you do phone in, you have a seven second delay. Mm. Right. 
And um, I used to always say to whoever was the operator on the program who had the buttons, please let me operate the so-called dump button. So if somebody came on and libeled Margaret Thatcher, I would think about letting it go out, but then I would dump it. Um, and if somebody came on and called me, you know, an F word or something, instead of dumping it straight away... <laughs> I know where you're coming. I know where you're going with this. I had six seconds. Now, when a caller, a little plonker in lower stuff, right, would ring up and go, I think you're a... All right. They're expecting me to go, and press the dump button. But instead of that, on the radio, they would be astonished to hear me say, yeah, well, how about this then, you little... And I would give them what they gave me, only much, much worse and much, much, much more uh, uncouth. And there'd be this little whimper at the other end. <laughs> and then I'd dump it. <laughs> but then one day, uh, a guy came on and he said, I think you're all right. Mm -mm -mm. And I went to go, yeah, well. And I looked down and I just was lucky enough to see that the dump button was already blinking. Yes, it hadn't built up its time. And what, no, what had happened was um, somebody was sick and we had a new technical operator on. And he, I hadn't bothered to say to him, I do the dumping. Don't use the dump. I do the dumping on my show. So he'd already dumped it. But as you know, if you have dumped, you cannot dump again for 10 seconds or something. You shouldn't tell the people this mix. No, no, no. Ah, we'll get him now. Um, and so had I gone, well, you are a... Uh, in, you in, wouldn't in, have got it. Brass, it would have gone out, you yeah. see. I went through and said to the tech operator, can, can, do you mind if I do the dumping on this show? He went, um, yeah, she said, uh, but you had to be a bit quicker than you were. <laughs> <laughs> can you back it up then, please? What do you mean by back it up? Well, you made well, it... Well, well, what do you regard as proof? It's, uh, what we're talking about here is actually, if, if I may, and this is much more interesting than talking about pro wrestling. Yeah. Much more interesting. Yeah, but because here, 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 no, here, here, what you've introduced accidentally in your case yeah. is at the very fulcrum of our existence and that is the nature of proof so what will constitute proof for you well the drawing pins that were embedded in his head at the end of the match no what, petal, what? petal 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 no, i'm talking about a concept here what is your concept of uh, what, what's proof? your answer to that what is your concept of proof and then I will the, the television meet it. Program. No, no. You don't even know what the word concept means, do you? I don't care what it means. Well, what we can't it? have a conversation then. Because you're changing the subject, aren't I'm you? I'm not. You've you asked me to answer. prove something, and I've asked you what co what constitutes proof in your in your opinion. If you tell me what you regard as what proof, I, I will pr furnish you with proof. What I saw on the television. No, but you're asking me to prove something. I'm not asking you to prove anything. You're asking me to prove something. I want to know what you would consider to be proven. What do you want? What? Oh, God, yeah, I want you to... Gee whiz, I get so cross sometimes. Yeah, so do I. You idiot, you idiot man. Yeah, so are you. Yeah, are you walking around doing things, influencing people? Do you talk so to people you. during the day? It's frightening. Yeah, do, you yeah. not do you not understand this simple you, you question? You're not answering the questions. You didn't answer that bloke earlier. That I can't answer the question until you tell me what you want the question to, to the answer to sound like. Well, you made the statement, didn't you, that it was all theatre and all... Can I prove it? Yes, provided you Go tell me what you would consider to be proof. Anything. Would you consider to be an intelligent... Would you consider an intelligent argument yes. to be... Yes. Well, why didn't you say so? Because you don't talk in English, you always... Sometimes... Don't talk in English! You always, you always have to... You can't words basically, like concept, can you? words like concept are beyond you. Forget about that then, just back it up, go on. Go no, on, in, no. in, in answer that... No, my learned friend, please. I'm not learned, you're learned. You are not learned at all. all right, and let... You are incredibly thick. Where did you go to school? Which school did you go to? Name and shame. It doesn't matter what school it does. Is. Name and shame. Which school did you go to? Forget about this. Answer tell me. Tell me the name of the school. Answer the question. I will answer the question on no, condition you that you tell me the you name can't. of the school that is responsible for your vocabulary. Because no, you're only going to slag it off, I think. I, I think you're doing a much better job of desecrating the memory Why do you of your want school. To know? Why than do you I want to know? Because uh, it's amusing. Yeah, exactly. That's what you want to know. Because <laughs> you're going to. <laughs> but do I have to tell you everything? Am I telling you now to inhale and exhale? To move on to your next thought. 
Am no. I? No. no. Am I telling your autonomous nervous system to are continue you going to, to have your, question or your not? heart beat are you going as to a reflex the question? action? Are you going to answer the question? Only if you tell me what you would consider to be a reasonable answer. Will intelligent argument suffice? Because I cannot. Yes, it will. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, I'm saying no. Well, why didn't you say so before? I don't know why I didn't say so. I'll tell you why. Would you like to know why? I'll tell no, you why. I just want to know the answer to the question. Don't go falsetto on me. Yeah, you, that's what you're doing. You're, you're, you're getting all stroppy. This isn't Wagner. You're getting all stroppy because I've got... I've cornered you. This isn't you. Lohengrin. You haven't cornered me, Petrol. Yeah, because I'm about you, to put in, the in, your, in, your, in your dreams. Listen to me very carefully. Very, very carefully. Now, answer the question. Or can't you? I, I, can, I, I bet I can answer Listen you five to questions me. about this subject that you can answer. Very carefully. And I'll prove your theory wrong that you know more about any subject than anybody else. Oh, well, it's so obvious to everybody, in, ex, including you. No, you, you didn't answer the chap earlier. You sufficiently... talked about football. You didn't answer those two questions, did you? Of course I did. No, you didn't. You didn't give him one answer. Of course I did. He, again, his questions were not properly formed. We're back to this thing about God having the answers. Go on, then answer to my questions, questions. That people haven't even thought of, and I'm beginning to wonder if he's me. Go on, answer the questions. You haven't answered them yet. You're going on about everything else, God and everything else, but um, except answering the question. The reason... Forget about God. That it is... Being. The reason that I can be certain that wrestling... Is Forget the, about the moves and all that sort of stuff. I'm talking about the blood and the drawing pins and all that sort of stuff. Forget about the moves. I can't forget. You can't tell somebody to forget something. Nobody well, can forget on order. Yeah, but I answered. The, I asked the question. Can about you forget the blood. something on order? Can you remember something on order? Well, can you question? remember what you had for breakfast Here we go on again. the twenty seventh of March, nineteen ninety nine? No. Yeah, it's but every morning. Could you forget what you had for breakfast this morning? No. I have toast every morning so I can remember. Yeah, but you can't forget, can you? Well, forget about that anyway. No, you see, you're, you've just no, you're done not. it again. <laughs> you're using the English language in such a lazy fashion. So are you? you? you will all... No, I'm not. Contestant. No, the precision... Anything My answer, language is like a Rolls-Royce engine. Are you going to answer it or not? I began to answer it and then you interrupted well, me. Well, go on, I won't interrupt now. Okay. The reason I can be certain that wrestling is pure theatre, is that imbeciles like you believe it is not. That's bloody good, that is. Is that it? That's bloody good, that is. Hello? Hello. That's yeah. bloody good, that is. I, I really enjoyed that. How about that is one of the cleverest things I've ever heard speak? on the radio. Are you going to let me speak? No. No, so you, because you're fighting about what I'm going to say. Terrified. Absolutely petrified. Quaking in my boots. I really am. Quick. Break out the amphetamines. I'm so af afraid of this young man. Oh, poor fella. Never mind. It's an interesting thing about forgetting, isn't it? It's like, you know, you can stay awake for over 100 hours, but you cannot make yourself carry on sleeping. You can go back to sleep, but you can, you've no control over waking up, have you? And once you've been awake for too long, you can't sleep anyway. The longest I've ever slept was 16 hours as an adult. I've never counted. What happened was I was working in America... And I worked that hard that I went to, to, to bed at 8 o'clock at night, quite, quite early for me. And I slept in the pillow store, which was a, a single building. This was a huge institution. And it was just full of pillows. <laughs> Can you imagine? A, a building full of, uh, and it was from the floor to the ceiling. And I climbed on top of them. And I slept and I slept and I slept and I slept. And when I woke up, I went outside and the guys were barbecuing for breakfast. Fantastic! Quickly 